Hello world, my name is Yvonne Gougelet and I am with Hot Indie News. I am here in DC. Today is April 15th, 2011. There is a huge power shift convention happening um, here in DC. Over 10,000 young leaders and activists are here to urge Congress that we need to end our dependency on oil, coal, fracking, mountaintop bombing, um, all of these negative energy sources. Uh, basically leaders from all around the world have come um, to, to urge Congress that we must move towards uh, clean energy because of the damaging effects on our ecosystem as well as uh, humanity. Um, a lot of Americans are suffering all around the world and especially here in America because of um, the extraction of these negative energy sources. Uh, for instance, um, when we, they're, they're doing this thing called mountaintop bombing, which when they blow up the mountains, there's radiation and ash being released into the air and it's falling into the water system, uh, the water supply, and people are uh, becoming injured and ill because of the exposure to um, the radiation and the ash. Um, fracking, we already know the dangers of fracking, um, that it's, the water is now flammable. But one major, 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 major issue is the BP oil spill. We are coming up on the one year anniversary of the BP oil spill. Um, I put that in quotes because it was not a spill. Over 4.9 million barrels of oil spilt into the ocean and there could be more. We've been told 4.9 million. 4.9 million barrels is a lot of oil, okay? And we've been told from the media, from Congress, that everything is okay in the Gulf. And now that we're approaching the one year anniversary, it is my personal mission to make sure that people in America and around the rest of the world understand that the issue is not over. Um, we're going to be conducting a sort of uh, futuristic interview over here that I've rigged up on Skype with a wonderful, brave, brave woman named Jennifer Rexford. She's currently um, in Florida, Panama City, and she was a cleanup worker, one of the quote-unquote first responders to the um, cleanup spill. And um, a lot of the workers are now sick, and a lot of workers have passed away. Um, this is a very, very important issue that needs to be talked about in the mainstream media. So I came here this weekend to talk to press, to talk to uh, clean energy activists, but I am also here to spread the word about Jennifer's story and all of the other innocent workers and civilians that have been affected by the BP oil spill. So that's what we're talking about. It's a little heavy, but it's urgent that we spread this word um, about the injured and the, and, and the people who have unfortunately passed away, okay? So um, I'm going to uh, show you what we have set up here. It's a little Skype interview that I have arranged with uh, Jennifer Rexford. Um, so uh, let's let's see. So we're, we're doing speakerphone. I mean, this is this is the future, people. Um, we have Jennifer Rexford here. Uh, can you say hello? Hey, Yvonne. Hi, Jennifer. Okay, great. So we can hear you now. Um, so I'm going to just give a quick little um, a quick little intro to you. Uh, I found Jennifer Rexford um, on YouTube. Um, a video of her, she's been documenting her her injuries, her illness and her workers' stories on YouTube. You can find her, what, what's the YouTube page again? J.M. Rexford. J.M. J.M. Yeah, my username is J.M. Rexford. I don't know what, if there's a whole website to address. It's, it's, it's a... Uh, J.M. Rexford, R-E-X-F-O-R-T. If you find Jennifer Rexford on YouTube, you will find uh, her page, and I found it, I stumbled upon it, and I saw that her videos only had about 14, 15 views, and I was mortified. So that's why I'm here today. Um, we posted, I posted a video on Current. It's now been, uh, we now have 98, she has 98,000 views on her video, and counting, um, but we need to continue to spread the word and get it in mainstream media. So, Jennifer, um, we're gonna do just a couple quick questions to get your story across. Um, Let's talk about how you first, um, you, were, you were on the Gulf and you were part of a cleanup crew and you 
now have some symptoms and some of your coworkers have symptoms, let's talk about your your injured workers and yourself. Um, workers from my general foreman to workers that have worked out on the beach with me have been suffering lesions, staph infections, body rashes, blindness, um, difficulty breathing, and uh, um, either leukemia, two have died of leukemia, and one has died of a heart attack. Um, we have reached out to several people, including DCCF. Um, we were told that we didn't have anything to do with oil. Um, we were ignored by most of the guys and by um, workers' compensation because they said we had whistleblower rights. So um, I've also seen nerve damage, um, memory loss, brain fog, and um, I had even my general foreman coming to me on a daily basis saying that he was sorry for what yeah, but uh, well, he was told to put us through. So, okay. I work for Plan Performance Services, B2S. Um, they are a company that I have heard handles the safety for a lot of refineries and different companies. Okay. There's a theory of the floor corporation. Which okay. Is a military operation. Hmm. Okay. So, um, so how long were you working in? Uh, well, let's just let's just talk briefly, really quickly about the working conditions. Uh, local. In the beginning, they weren't totally prepared for what was going on, and so they had us in tennis shoes. They had us using medical gloves and Ziploc baggies and things like that. They had us putting what we found. If it was a small amount, just sticking it in our pocket. We didn't want to affect her. It wasn't that bad. Um, we weren't allowed to talk to media. We weren't allowed to talk to other people. We found oil. We weren't allowed to tell people that it was oil. I mean, it was it was pretty hectic up until a little while after the tropical storm that had passed by. Um, we were they they had us in the water at one point in nothing but our tennis shoes, scooping out tar balls, and um, I mean our socks, our shoes, our shirts would be soaked at the end of the day as we pulled them off on the bus. Okay. They made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, and they promised that they would help us and recover from it. And that we would make up for those mistakes. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice goes out a lot. Um, and uh, yet they still have it. And um, it's, it's really difficult because everywhere I turn, I'm fighting for their health. Right, and okay. And there are people that made so much money off of us. And now I feel like we were used as their puppets. You know, and they're... they're they're just their disposable money making machines. Right. Okay. Well, article that came out. well, listen, we have two minutes left. I want to just get some quick issues. Um, let's talk about, um, let's just be real brief because uh, we don't have a lot of time on YouTube, unfortunately. Okay. Um, let's talk about, you mentioned that you have 35 coworkers that are sick and injured, and that's just there in Panama City. Um, we know that spread all across the Gulf, there are there was 42,000 workers that went down to clean up this bill, including fishermen and unemployed people in the Gulf. Okay, so out of those 42,000 people, we don't know how many people are injured, but in your group alone, 35. Let's talk about the seriousness of the situation. You said that you have lost several friends and coworkers. Can you, can you talk about that? Yes, I lost two coworkers to um, onset malignant um, onset malignia, uh, leukemia. It's a unique type of leukemia, rather rare. And then I've had one coworker just die of a heart attack um, unexpectedly. Um, the rest of my coworkers, like including myself, have a flesh-eating bacteria, a staph infection that's really rare and only found in pretty much chemotherapy patients whose immune systems have been cut down so low. That's what it comes to. Um, I have staph infections spread mo over most of my body from where I had direct contact with oil. And even had to sit in the sand at one day to eat my meal. So. Right, they <laughs> made you. So you guys weren't properly, um, you weren't wearing proper gear. They, I know, I know that B BP uh, told your employers that um, you were not allowed to wear respirators, and that's a huge issue. Um, if you were not, if you were told you were not allowed to wear respirators, um, 
they didn't want photos of you guys being taken. They didn't want photos of us in respirators because that would scare the public for one. And for two, they told us that the, the core exit and the dispersant spraying was no different and the exposure that we had was no different than a cigarette. Uh, the amount of exposure that we have would have been so light. But if you look at neurotrophic regulations, when we are sitting there for 16 hours a day, soaking up the oil into your skin that is not in all of your shirt or all of your pants, you got to include that. How, you know, how, long, don't realize that. how long were your work days? Um, in the beginning, we, had, uh, we worked seven days a week, 14 hours a day, but we had to be there an hour early, and that was we didn't get paid for. So it would end up being 16 hours a day. Six, um, 16 we hours a day. Seven days a week. If you don't mind me asking, how much, oh, I'm sorry, how, how many weeks? Four weeks. So you worked a total of four weeks. Do you know anybody that worked longer than that? Oh, no, I worked past, no, I still work continuously on there. And that's when they cut our hours to rotation, where we were four days on, three days off, and we worked only eight hours a day, or then we only worked 10 hours a day, and then we would go down to rotation. And then um, I stopped working in August 15th. And then I, uh, a couple of my coworkers worked until September. Gosh, okay. So, so um, I'm going to just uh, basically explain the, the situation here to the, the, the camera here. That the situation is, is that BP knew that the, the rig was unsafe. And that's come out in the media Thank God it's come out in the media that that BP knew that the rig was unsafe and um, they're being uh, charged for manslaughter right now. The the people who were on the rig. Um, OK, so we know that much that they knew in advance that there was potential danger with the rig. Then the rig exploded and there was the oil spill and marine life are dying and people have died. And the issue is not over because the oil is still there. The oil, now I'm gonna talk briefly about core exit, okay? And we only have, we, we actually have three minutes left, okay? Um, because of YouTube regulations. Um, core exit is a chemical that is produced by a company called Nalco. Nalco, and all this information is out there, it's online. Nalco is a company that's owned by BP. So BP spent their money to clean up the oil spill when in fact the chemical that they used, the dispersant that they used is more, more toxic, more toxic than the oil itself. Okay. And this information on core exit, core exit, C-O-R-E-X-I-T is online. Read it. You can find the information. Core exit is incredibly toxic. BP has been pouring millions of, you know, barrels of this stuff into the water to clean up the spill core exit doesn't actually clean up anything what it does is the core exit allows the oil to become smaller uh, smaller clumps and it actually sinks to the bottom and you can find this information online it's out there now the chemical is more toxic than the oil itself and it's being picked up by the rain and it's spreading across the gulf um, on vegetation have you have you seen what what is your experience with core exit? Um, I've seen it just um, it makes things dotted, it makes it dotted along the sand so it spreads the chemicals. I've seen it on the matting, I've seen it I've just seen it stain boots and shirts and I've seen it stain boats and, and uh, I've been sprayed that with the actual band material, there's two forms of core exit. There's core exit 9500 and there's core exit 9527, I think it is. Right. And I was sprayed with the core exit 9527 that was later on banned for safety measures, and yet I'm still being ignored for my health concerns. Exactly. Okay, well, I have a couple minutes, uh, one second to wrap this up. Jennifer, thank you so much. Stay on the line for me one second, okay? Okay. okay, okay, so this, this is this is the story. Core exit is dangerous, it's toxic, people are dying, BP is covering it up, we need to get it into the mainstream media. Jennifer is just one of many people who are sick. Um, you can search for The Road to Washington. They are marching from New Orleans to D.C. today. The Road for Washington, Project Gulf Impact. Um, thank you so much. Please spread the word. My name is Yvonne Gougelet with Hot Indie News. Please spread the word. People 
are dying. Thank you so much.